Hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to break down some of the methods that I use to use real-world data to create visualizations of locations that I really like. It's super easy, doesn't require a whole lot, and uh, everything that you that I use here can be obtained for free. It's all public domain, everything like that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to urs.earthdata.nasa.gov forward slash home and create an earth data login account. This is going to be required for the site that I use. If it's not required for a site that you use to gather DEM data, uh, then you don't have to worry about this, but this is, this is going to be a requirement. Uh, there are no obligations to this account. It's a safe government account. Um, all you need it is for this one location, this one website we're going to go to because it's going to pull data from NASA. And all the website does is make it easier to get that information. So once you have your account created and it's verified and everything, you can go ahead and um, log in. You have to be logged in or else it's not going to work. And then we're going to navigate to this website. And this website is dwtkns.com forward slash srtm 30m. And this site relies on the Earth Data login to gather the files. And the files are just these tiles. <clears throat> if you're not logged in before you come here, it'll still load up the tiles for you. But when you go to download a, a, a tile, it'll ask you to log in. So you just skip a step by logging in first and then coming here. So to break down how this tiling system works on this website, I'll explain it to you real quick. Um, it shouldn't take too long and it's super easy. So everything is on a grid, um, and as you go more west or more east, more north and more south, these numbers right here change. So this tile right here is a part of Utah around the Lake Powell area, which is what I'm using for the example in this tutorial. It is N37W111, that stands for North 37 West 111. If I go to, to the tile next to it, it'll be North 37 West 110 and so on and so forth, so forth as you keep going up, the west value will decrease. And it will decrease all the way until you hit zero and then it'll start counting in um, terms of east. So if we were to go here, way over here is 78. We'll go over here. This is now west 03 and now it's east 04. So um, there is a line at which everything will be considered east and it's right here on the outside of Valencia in Spain uh, or um, up here in London uh, Greenwich I believe I think I think they do it in the same area as like when UTC time is starting at zero but in any case uh, at, a, at an eventual spot everything will be going east and then it's the same thing with north and south the more north you get the higher the number so this will be 938 the one above that will be 939. If I can get to it, sometimes this tile is getting in the way. So this will be nine. This will be N39, not 939, but N39. So on and so forth. And then as you decrease in the north values, that number decreases as well. So that's only really important if you're downloading multiple tiles, because in some cases you might want to download more than one tile and stitch them together so you can have a larger area to play with. Um, but for the example in this tutorial, we're only going to be sticking with one tile, and it'll be this one right here. When you select a tile, as you can see, it turns yellow. Uh, you probably already guessed that, and that just means you have it selected. When it's d downloaded, it turns green, and it'll stay green until you um, refresh the, the website. And that's just to help you know which one you've already downloaded, and you can get the tiles you need that connect to it properly, and you don't lose yourself. So that's pretty nice. All right, so... I'm going to go ahead and download this uh, dem file and I'm just going to save it to my desktop and it's going to download in a zip folder and we're going to have to unzip it. So here it is right here. Open that up and I'll just drag this out. Now this is not a regular height file which is why we're going to need two programs uh, to continue moving forward. We're going to need either micro dem or global mapper. MicroDEM is free. It's a little older of a program, but it works just fine in getting height data. Global Mapper is a uh, premium product. It's really good. I like it a lot, uh, but it does cost money. Uh, but I do recommend people to get both of them and learn both of them. 
but if you want to follow along you can at least do so for free without any kind of premium product. I'll be showing you how to do both of them or how to get height data from both of these programs but I'm going to actually start with microdem first. So once we have our file downloaded and extracted from its zip folder we're going to go ahead and open up microdem and in microdem there's not a whole lot to this program. I mean, there is a lot to this program, but not for the purposes that we're going to use it for. So let's go ahead and go to file and open. And if you downloaded mul multiple tiles, you're going to have to use the open and merge Dems grid option. But if you only downloaded one file and you're only importing one file, you can just do the open Dem grid and then just find the file that you downloaded. In this case, it'll be this one. And then after it's loaded in, it'll give us a representation of what we had downloaded. And this is accurate. All right, so there are a few things to keep note of when you're using DEM data. Usually if you're using DEM data, it's because you want a real world location and you want to have the, the features in that location uh, in your 3D program, at least to some extent. We're, it's still only a height, height map, so we are gonna be losing detail regardless of what we do, but um, in another 3D modeling program, you could probably put in some, you know, uh, rock features and stuff like that. The, your normal workflow. So, <clears throat> um, this is what we downloaded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width and length of this, and it'll give me the values in meters and kilometers. That's how MicroDEM is set up by default. And if you look in the bottom over here of the program in this area, it'll give you your cursor location and the elevation in your Z, which is your elevation um, as you move it around. By default, the lower areas are going to be this light blue and dark blue colors, while the uh, higher elevations are going to be this uh, red and purple color. So now would be a good time to find your lowest elevations and your highest elevations. And I think the highest elevation is over here, actually. Um, it actually gets more white the higher elevation it gets. And right there, it's about 3,442 meters. And the lowest is like around this area right here, which is 11,024. So uh, you're going to want that information before you do anything else because we're actually going to set up our Z range properly so we get the right height information. Uh, you can estimate and round up. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate, but it is good to get as close as you possibly can. That way it's as accurate as possible. Um, so in this case, I'm actually going to do 3400 and I'm just going to do 1250 because that'll just make it easy. Now that we have those ranges figured out, we're also going to want to find our measurements in scale. And to do that, we're going to use this tool right here. And this tool will allow us to measure our distance from edge to edge going width and length and we're going to want that so we know what our size of this tile is and now just from experience most of the places or at least most of the tiles that i get in the united states have been 88 kilometers wide by 110 long so we'll just verify that real quick by double clicking and then we'll just move our mouse over here and if you look down in this area right here it'll give us our length measurement or a width measurement so it's about 88.2 kilometers so pretty close it's a little bit a little bit wider than 88 kilometers but not by much um, and we can choose to save that if we wanted um, in this case i'm not going to it gives you the length in miles too which is nice but i work in meters um, and kilometers more so i'm just going to keep it with that and now we're going to do it again so we're going to do it this way going up and you see there it's about 110.8 kilometers so um, now that we know our width and length we are going to go ahead and keep note of that and that way we can scale things properly in the program we're using now if you're using this for a game engine or for any other program that requires a power of two you can take this image and split it in half and then just round up to the next power of two from there um, and that would be probably the best use case, but it's not going to come out. You're not going to get all the detail that you're going to want out of this. So a good rule of thumb is if you know that you want a 100 kilometer area to play with, then you're going to want to grab additional 
neighboring tiles so you have some wiggle room to gather all the data that you need so you can keep it a power of two but for this example i'm just going to go ahead and um not worry about that and just grab a perimeter value so that's going to be on a square if you add up all four sides of a square that is your perimeter the perimeter is going to be 200 kilometers so that's 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 that that will equal 200. So that's what I'm going to do in this situation. If you click this button right here, it'll uh, it'll undo the subsets. You might have to reload your dem data if you do this, um, but it should clear out those lines. But if you have to reload your dem data, it's super easy. We can do it again. It doesn't really matter. So um, I'll go ahead and open that back up. And now that we have the values that we want, we can go ahead and start getting the area that we want. So I'm going to use this tool right here. This is your subset and zoom tool. And what will happen is it's like a selection marquee. And it's a, it's a square selection marquee. And it'll actually crop out the area that you are wanting to grab and remove the rest of the data. And there is no undoing inside of MicroDEM. So if you make a mistake, you have to reload your, um, your DEM file again and then start from scratch. That's why we got all the stuff that is non-disruptive out of the way before we started doing the disruptive stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab somewhere right here in the middle and call it good. And I'm just going to increase my selection until I get 50 by 50. It'll read it down here in the same location. Might, yeah, right. I might have to go a little lower. just so I'm not hitting the top. Okay, so this is just gonna be as an example, so I'm not too worried about accuracy here, but you would wanna be as accurate as you possibly can be. And then there might be an easier way of doing it, but that's pretty close. So that was 50.1 by 50. So that'll give us a 200 kilometer perimeter that we can work with. And it's still a pretty large area to play with as well. All right, so after we have found the area that we want, we're going to go ahead and convert this to the proper Z range as well as our height map. So let's go ahead and do that. To do that, you're going to right click your image, go to display parameter, elevation. And then from here, we're going to set our Z range. Now remember the Z range is the values that we found before we did anything else. It's going to do its best to approximate what the values are. And it, it's pretty close a lot of the time, but it's not super accurate. Uh, or not totally accurate, I should say. It's super accurate, but not totally accurate. So in this case, I'm just going to choose 3500 because that's the value that I chose to have. And I'm going to do 1250 here because, again, that was close enough to the lower elevations. I'm going to hit OK. And the lower elevations in this case actually doesn't really matter that much because if you're using Gaia, it doesn't actually go into zero bounds or negative bounds. So um, having a negative value there doesn't really change much, but it does give you a more accurate height map. After that, if it sits here and spins for a long time, just ignore that and select grayscale and then go ahead and hit OK. And now that converted it into a grayscale image that we can use for a height map. And you can notice here we have no shaded relief over the top of it and we have no hill shading as well. So from this point, we can export this out as the file format that we need. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're going to go to file. We're going to save it map as image and we're going to choose GeoTIFF screen scale grayscale. Now before you do save this out I have to explain the screen scale. Um, it's going to export out the resolution that it's currently displaying on your screen. So if you want to get as much detail as you possibly can or at least the highest resolution height map out that you can get, you're going to want to increase the zoom factor here. 100% works in most cases and actually is a lot easier to use because you can clean up the stepping that you're inevitably going to get inside of your image. So um, I recommend just going to 100, but if you wanted to try out 200, you most definitely could. Just know that if you go to 200, it will pro probably be a little more blurry and you'll have a lot more stepping which is that banding that occurs in uh, elevation data that is low bit. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with 100. And 
now I'll go to file save map as image and I'm going to export it out as a GeoTIFF grayscale and from here we'll just name it something I'm going to name it test and save it to my desktop there we go and now from here we can go ahead and import it into Gaia disregard this I was making a file for one of the discord members who wanted to know how to use iceflow and I showed them how to do it alright so let's go ahead and put in a file node and we'll load up that GeoTIFF, which is right there. All right, and that's our GeoTIFF. You'll notice that it looks pretty funky. Um, and we don't really want that. So if you're using the whole range uh, from your file, then you can go to the Build and Terrain Definitions tab and enter in your 88 kilometers and your 3,500, whatever it is that you had there. But if you cropped it out like I did, we can go back to MicroDem and we can measure out our new um, our new size. And I'll do that just by zooming out just so it's easier to use. It's not going to affect the measurement because the measurement's built into the dem file. Now we can use our tool here to measure out from the edge over. So our new length is 50 kilometers by 50 kilometers, of course, because that's what we set it to when we selected it. So <clears throat> the scale here is going to be set to 50,000 and the height is going to be 3,500. Now that is our real world scale right there. That is how you would probably properly set up your terrain definitions after bringing it in from, uh, from MicroDem. If it does look a little flat to you and you don't really like the, the definitions that you have there, you could always exaggerate them. It's just not going to be real world scale. You're going to exaggerate it just a tiny bit more and um, you'll introduce some additional issues, but or not issues, but complications in scaling. But for the most part, this is real world scale. If you imported this into your program, it would look huge. Um, and that's what you want if you want a real location. So from here, you can increase it to whatever size that you want uh, to work with. And Gaia will take care of the rest of the uh, exporting uh, parameters. So if you were to build this out at 2K, which is probably going to be the closest to what you're going to get from the actual height map, then you can do that. If you want to do 4K, you could do that as well. Uh, it'll build it out. It's not going to introduce much more detail because we're not, we actually don't have a 4K height map in most cases. You might, depending on your screen size and your resolution. Uh, but I know this one's going to be closer to 2K. So I'm just going to stick to 2K. Now to get rid of this banding, this terrible, terrible banding, this is caused by um, low resolution as well as low bit depth. Gaia has a really cool node built into it called Heal, and it was made specifically for this stuff. The default values will get rid of a lot of it, but as you can tell, there's still quite a few uh, extra steps in there. So to increase it, you just go to the heal properties and you can choose whatever you want that looks good. I find a value of anywhere between 5 and 15 to be plenty. I don't usually use more than 15. And in this case, 10 is probably going to be good. We can try 15 just to see what it looks like. And, you know, 15, I mean, there was a difference between 10 and 15, but it wasn't so noticeable that it's going to be a huge issue. So I'm just going to stick with 10. You don't want to be using a whole lot of heal because you will end up getting a lot of blurry um, features. But uh, uh, use enough to get rid of the stepping the best you can. And then you're going to rely on other, fa other filters and effects like erosion to really, to really kill off those, uh, those steps. Uh, and in this case, we're probably going to use just a slight bit of erosion just to fill in some of the gaps with some sediment while retaining a good overall look and shape. And I like to use just small amounts here. So the duration I'm actually going to set to one and the strength, probably 25, we'll just reduce it by half there. And that will introduce just enough erosion. It will cover up the top surfaces and introduce some data that we can use for texturing. As you can see here, it's just a very, very small amount. We're not using a whole lot. And then from here, you can do whatever you want. So there's a river here or a lake. So I'm going to go ahead and 
pop lakes in here and I'll see how close it gets to finding the proper areas. And the lakes node does a pretty good job at finding the proper areas. These places up here aren't really filled with water. Um, this is mostly desert with just a giant lake and a river that flows into it. So I'd, I'd be a little bit more selective here, but for the most part, it's done a pretty good job at finding exactly where that info will be. Uh, and that will conclude how to import real world data uh, into Gaia and how to process it properly. Microdem's free. Again, I'll, I'll state that it's free over and over and over again because you can get what you need out of it. And I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you in some way, shape, or form. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create with specific DEM data. And look forward to another video where we talk about what you can do inside of Global Mapper to get your DEM data out and maybe some additional things that might be useful for you inside of that program. So I'll see you guys in the next video.